experiences and thoughts on today's agenda with all of us. Thank you so much, uh, Ashika, uh, for the generous words about me. My greetings to one and all, and my respect to the chief guest of this program, Honorable Justice Madam Jyan Sudha Mishraji, retired judge, Supreme Court of India. I'm very, very thankful to Professor Panda, sir, Director Kids Law School, the faculty coordinators, Dr. Garikapati, Dr. Jinia Kundu, Dr. Shashank Nande, and the entire organizing team, including uh, Professor Yugal Kishorji and uh, Professor Srivastavaji, for inviting me to share my views on the all time relevant theme on the International Women's Day, that is, issues and challenges of women empowerment in the contemporary world. So, uh, first of all, uh, we need to know uh, what is women empowerment. And then the issues that hinder women to become empowered, uh, what challenges are there that stops a woman to empower herself, uh, even though we know that there is no paucity of the laws, uh, policies, uh, supportive judicial pronouncements, and uh, international framework also, which is supporting the gender equality. And then finally, some way out uh, for this purpose. Uh, we know that uh, the state organs, the uh, NGOs, they are all working you know, uh, as the constitutional mandate is there for equality, but perhaps half-heartedly. And that's why the results are not seen. As Madam Kajal was saying that uh, we are all here and we cannot think about the inequality, but India is a very big nation. And uh, we see that it is divided in different sectors, in different categories, in different geographical conditions. So each and every woman is not equal, though we have the mandate, constitutional mandate for equality. There are certain practical problems. There are certain implementative uh, problems uh, also, uh, through which we find that inequality is also there. And, uh, so, as I said that this is an all time relevant theme, women empowerment, equality, challenges and whatnot. Uh, every individual uh, we see possesses some talent, some skill. And if they are not restricted to use that skills, uh, choices which they have and the interest to participate and develop, they feel empowered by having abilities to use that talent which they are having. Similarly, uh, women's empowerment is an effort to empower themselves, empower the women by having those abilities, those skills, those talent in accordance with the interests uh, that they possess. So uh, women empowerment means uh, something like uh, emancipation also of women from the nasty grips, as I told, uh, these may be social, these may be economical, political, caste, gender-based, different types of data discriminations are there. And the ability of the women to exercise full control over their actions is the women empowerment. To assert about their rights, what rights have been conferred upon them through the supreme law of the land. Then if they have the power to assert about their rights, then they are empowered to come out of the stereotype roles or what we say gender roles assigned to them, uh, especially in the society by the so-called Samaj ke theke dar jin ko hum kehte hain. So basically empowerment is granting the women the freedom to make her choices in the life, to replace the discrimination with equality and changing patriarchy with Parity, that is empowerment, because we all know patriarchy is there. And in that way, there are certain stereotype roles which the women is facing, which the women has to perform, that has to observe. And without the equal inclusion of half of the world's talent, that is the women. The question is that, can we be able to grow our nation at the world's map? So gender discrimination not only hampers the overall development of a woman, but the nation also suffers equally. And there are uh, different aspects, there are different uh, perspectives of women empowerment. For example, 
if we talk about the social perspective of women empowerment, then uh, this uh, implies the gender equality, uh, where the society in which men and women enjoy the same opportunities, the same outcomes, the rights and obligations in every sphere of life, that the woman is having the freedom to express herself, the freedom in which she can feel herself comfortable, comfortable to say something, to express her views without any hesitation in the family, in the group, in the society, in group meetings uh, with others also. Uh, this is what a social perspective of the women uh, empowerment see, is seen there. The equality, the freedom of expression, and she has the ex uh, freedom to movement also, to visit the places, to go out with confidence. If this is available, then uh, a woman is socially, uh, we can say, uh, empowered. She has, to, we have the control over her own body. She has to be a control over her own reproductive choices. This is what we feel that the social empowerment of the women requires all these things. Uh, then uh, without, uh, without this social empowerment, there are other types of the perspectives of women empowerment, uh, which cannot be fulfilled unless this first thing, that is the social perspective is seen there. Uh, then uh, educational perspective is also there. Uh, we are all educated. We are saying that we are academicians, but at the same time, how many of the women, uh, they are getting the chance to reach to these schools? The dropout rates we all are very much aware about. So the educational perspective of the women empowerment means that to allow the women to develop the knowledge, to develop the skills and self-confidence. There may be academicians, there may be teachers, there may be the persons who are having the degrees, educational degrees, but how many of them are self-confident? So the self-confidence is also one of the perspective of the women empowerment, uh, which is very necessary to participate uh, fully in the development process. It simply means that uh, making women aware about their rights and developing a, uh, a confidence to claim those rights. Knowledge and awareness that simply means the uh, level of consciousness, consciousness and the women. And that is to be measured in terms of the knowledge changes in the mindset. Because even if a woman, she is educated, but whether she is having the right to express herself, whether she is having the rights over her own body, she is having the control over her choices, being educated cannot alone be make a women empowered, but it is related with the social perspective of the empowerment also. Then another aspect or another perspective of the women uh, empowerment, which is seen is the economic and occupational perspective. Uh, this is one of the important aspect or perspective for women empowerment, because it simply means a better quality of life in which the women may have the right to own, to manage the livelihoods, livelihoods that is to be sustainable, that she must have that economic uh, right or that she must have the financial rights with her so that she can sustain her livelihood. Uh, she is uh, to be financially independent and uh, they are not, or uh, the women is not to be said to be dependent on the male counterparts so that they are economically independent. They can participate in economic activities also and financial decision-making. Then uh, she'll be considered to be economically empowered women and uh, they may have the choices uh, to own their own occupation, job, the right to spend the money as per their requirements, as per their choice. Because uh, many of the women, they are working women, they are earning money, they are economically sound, but the point is that whether they are independent to use, to spend the money as per their choice, their requirements, because, uh, this is uh, one of the area where we find that many of the working women, they really don't uh, see themselves to be empowered economically or through occupational perspective because they are earning money. They have been sent out for work, but 
their money, their salary, they are not entitled or they are not free to, I mean, expend that money. So women empowerment is that, that whether she's having the ability to make small or big purchases independently also, that is how uh, she can understand herself or can name herself as uh, economically empowered. Then a legal perspective of the uh, women empowerment is also their research is that uh, the provisions of the effective legal structure, uh, which is supportive for the women empowerment, it simply means the addressing the gaps uh, between what the law prescribes as formal equality and what actually results in substantive equality. It means uh, uh, the enforcement of legislations uh, that protects uh, her rights as a, as a human being. So uh, legal perspective is also there uh, which can empower the women. And we know there are a number of laws uh, which exist for empowering the women also. So whether those are properly uh, activated or not, substantive equality is coming as a result of that equality or not. These are some of the points which uh, I'll be discussing. Then uh, at the political sphere also, we find that uh, uh, the women uh, can be empowered, can, can feel empowered herself if uh, she's having the right to enter in the political arena also. That's to say the political system uh, which favors women participation and control, her role in the part uh, political decision-making process uh, and in the governance of the country, the ability of the women to make the influence also, uh, the process of uh, fulfilling those decisions or developing some leadership qualities in the women regarding that political scenario. So we see that the percentage of seats which are held by the women in national state or local level in panchayat and municipality, all these local bodies, uh, this can make them uh, empowered politically also. Therefore, uh, women empowerment refers to increasing the political, social, educational, gender, economic, and, and different types of the strength, different types of the ability, different types of the talent, what for? To participate in the things, to move in the society and to control the choices of her own and not to be controlled by others. But women's empowerment in India is dependent on different factors. Like, uh, as I told you, geographical uh, locations uh, may differ uh, the empowerment of the women. Uh, if it is a uh, women uh, belonging to the rural area or the women in the urban area, their aspects would be different. The educational status, the social status, the caste, the class and age, these are all various factors on which we, we, we see that the empowerment of the women is dependent on. Uh, laws and policies on women empowerment uh, exist at the international level, national level, local level. And th that, uh, that policies also includes various, uh, various pro provisions relating to the health, education, economic opportunities. All, all these things are there, the, to con how to control the gender-based violence and how to make the participation uh, valid for the women in the politics also, or political field also. But uh, uh, we find that uh, having all these laws, policies at national and international level, which are legally ensuring the women's uh, empowerment and participation, whether it is a CEDAW, Convention on Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, uh, which is said to be a Bible for the women's right, that provides elimination of uh, all types of the discrimination, uh, whether it is social, legal, political, economic, uh, by pro uh, prescribing ma many of the provisions therein. Uh, in India, the Supreme Alex, the Supreme uh, Law of the Land, that also starts from the preamble giving equality rights to the women, right from the fundamental rights, whether Article 14 is there, 15, 16. So all these fundamental rights are there, which are equally available to the women. To the extent that 15.3 provides the special provisions can be made for women and children by the state. Then uh, the directive principles of the state policy that also speaks about the equal right uh, and uh, for adequate means of livelihood, equal pay for equal work, the maternity relief also. 
And these are all the obligations uh, on the state uh, under directive principles of the state policy. Besides, uh, the dignity is also ensured not only in the preamble for all the citizens, but also it's a citizen's fundamental duty under uh, part 4A of the constitution, which, is, uh, which says that the practices which are derogatory has to be renounced against the women. Uh, and uh, the political participation of the women is also ensured by giving the reservation in the local bodies in panchayats and municipalities, though we know that the reservation in the uh, Lok Sabha uh, that is, is still pending and uh, uh, there is no political participation ensured legally, but otherwise uh, that is open for all. So uh, these provisions basically, I, I, I just want to emphasize ensure. Uh, empowerment, dignity, and equality of women in all the fields, whether it is social, political, economic, or uh, 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 occupational fields. Besides uh, this uh, constitutional provisions, you see the various uh, statutes are also there, dowry, uh, domestic violence, child marriage, uh, sex determination, maternity, and many more. So uh, numberless, numerous, numerous uh, laws are there. But there are significant gaps between law policy advancements and their actual practices, as I just uh, referred that uh, is the difference between the formal and the substantive equality, because we all know that there exist written laws, but uh, there is no denial of uh, unwritten differences. Uh, they also exist. It's not written, but the escort of a girl of 18 or 20 years is to be given in a two, three year old boy that is the opposite sex. This is something which is not written. Women cannot move freely in the evenings. Uh, I'm not talking of the metro cities where uh, a little bit uh, freedom is now being uh, exercised or enjoyed by the women, but otherwise also in some of the areas, they are not allowed to move out after evening. So uh, written laws of equalities are there, but uh, at the same time, there are in practice some unwritten differences also. There are several challenges and constraints that check the process of uh, women empowerment in India, social norms and family structure that perpetuate the subordinate status of women. Just think about how can a woman contribute if she is not allowed to be born? One of the norms is the preference for son over the birth of the girl child. We all know the sex ratio in India. Even there is a paucity in Punjab and Haryana of the girls. Uh, the, the, the boys, they are not getting the girls for their marriage. So uh, that is uh, one of the very important factor which is uh, present in almost all the societies, female feticide. Earlier it was infanticide, but now due to the misuse of technology, uh, we are facing the female feticide. Uh, I told you that the law is there, sex determination, prenatal uh, uh, diagnostic trait, uh, diagnostic techniques act is there, but it's still the technology is being misused. So how can a woman contribute if she's not allowed to be born even? She's not allowed. Then how can a woman contribute if she is not allowed to go to the schools. Even if she is allowed to bond, then the second stage comes back whether she is entitled to go to the school, whether um, what happens with, with the girl. So we all know the dropout rate of the girl child that tells the entire story. Uh, she remains busy in the domestic work. Uh, She's helping the mothers. Uh, and then at the same time, child marriage, uh, the evil of this child marriage is still prevalent in some of the states in India. And these are being uh, performed as the festivals in some of the states, whether it's Rajasthan and uh, Madhya Pradesh and some other states also. The society is more biased, uh, you see, in favor of the male child in respect of the education, nutrition, and other opportunities which a female girl child is not receiving. And that's why she's not being allowed to go to the school. Then how can a uh, woman contribute if she is not allowed, or I should say that she is not able to move freely. Just consider the violence against women, whether it is rape, harassment, molestation, eve teasing, acid attacks, honor killing. So the list is going on. Dowry deaths, domestic violence, and what not. They have experienced physical or sexual violence in public areas. Uh, everybody must be aware about what happened to Nirvaya and what happened in Hyderabad uh, to that lady doctor. So 
many of the things are there. Uh, so these are not allowing the women to move freely. So this is something like that. So how the women can feel empower herself besides there are so many laws, but because she cannot contribute because she is not allowed, she is not able to move freely. Uh, this is what we are all experiencing further uh, with the technological advancement. We find the cyber crimes are also being committed against the women, particularly they are the main victims also. Uh, women is always a woman. Uh, this is my experience, a victim. She's neither a judge nor an advocate, academician, doctor, surgeon, bureaucrat, technocrat, whatever, scientist, politician, or even a police officer. But the main thing is that a woman is a woman. So when this comes to the violence against women, then they are considered only as women and not the other things which they have uh, they have uh, reached up to that stage state status. Uh, she's a victim always. So how can a woman contribute if uh, she is not allowed to participate in decision making? Uh, leave her representation at international or national level as has been provided in CEDAW. Just see if she's allowed to take the decision in the home affairs, to take a small decisions even, what type of the things will be purchased for the home, whether she is having that uh, right, she's empowered to that extent. So there are several challenges and uh, uh, these challenges are also plaguing the issues of the women's rights in India. Uh, so uh, it's not like that uh, we have to face all these things uh, for all the time to come. There are certain way forward, uh, women's mobility and social interaction that need changes. Uh, there is a need to provide education that builds a self image and self confidence because to become educated is one thing to develop the self confidence in those educated women that is something different. Education that develops their ability to think changes in women's control over the resources, decision-making. Uh, she is uh, given equal opportunities or not. And even if she is given the equal opportunity, whether she could enjoy that opportunity or not, or there are certain restrictions, there are certain hindrances also. We have to see all these things. And uh, then only we, 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 we can say that uh, the women can be uh, brought in the main stream. Mainstream means that in the decision making, mainstream in the that, that she has the power to move uh, freely everywhere. Uh, this doesn't mean that uh, she should uh, do something or some uh, those type of the activities uh, which may uh, which may not be considered to be dignified. So uh, women, uh, uh, whatever she does, that must be dignified. That must be respectful, and uh, she must be given proper uh, proper. I mean. Uh, uh, learnings and teachings about upskilling or reskilling the talent or uh, she must be made aware about realizing of the self worth of the women. Uh, she must have to improve the confidence, uh, the improvement of knowledge. Uh, all these things are very, very important for improving the personality of the women and without the improvement of all these things, uh, the personality is not empowered, then the women cannot, uh, um, cannot be said to be empowered in that way. And finally, uh, we say that uh, laws and government's initiatives uh, alone would not be sufficient to achieve this goal of empowerment. Society must take initiative to create an atmosphere in which there is no gender equality. The, the most, uh, uh, the women must have uh, the uh, full opportunity of self decision making and participating in all uh, lives, all types of the functioning in, the, in their life uh, with a sense of equality. A woman represents half of the population we know. So until uh, the women are uh, given some uh, opportunities or similar opportunities than that of the men, entire nation will be destined to perform below its true potentials. The social attitudes need to be changed. So I'm not saying that the mindset of the male is to be changed. I'm, I'm advocating, I'm advocating that the mindset of the women now is required to be changed uh, because she has to develop the self-confidence. She has to improve her knowledge. She has to develop her attitude, positive attitude. And 
she has to come in the main stream and that's only we can find that the women is not in a pitiful uh, condition she has to stand for herself she has to stand for herself so be strong be empowered so that empowered women can empower women it is not we are not depending we are not claiming that this time the uh, the other sex the male members they come and they empower ourselves this is up to us only that we should be very very strong we should uh, feel ourselves empowered and once we are empowered then only we can empower the others also so with these words i stop here and uh, thanks for allowing me to share my thoughts on this very important and auspicious auspicious day of the international women's uh, 